Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my reading journal system and why it isn't working. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Now this probably is going to be a very chatty video. And so I will timestamp when I actually start showing you some things. But this first part, especially, I'll be talking about how I approach my channel and by extension, how I approach this particular reading journal system. I'll go into the various things that you're seeing here on the desk. And then at the end of the video, I'll go over why that system wasn't working for me. And then just give you a quick sneak preview of video two, which I've actually already filmed and edited of the reading journal system that I will be doing going forward. The third video in this series, and it's only going to be a three video series, I guess, um, is I'm going to show you probably in the next month or two or four, who knows, the reading journal system that I have come up with actually filled in. Okay, so uh, I know that there's a glare. So let me move this to the side and open something up so you can have something to look at while I'm chatting. Okay, so the way that I approach my channel is uh, it's a channel for my creative journey, which is basically a fancy way for me to say this is my hobbies or these are my hobbies. And so I enjoy reading, uh, coloring, journaling. Um, I don't actually do planning because I'm not a planner. I enjoy crafting and just sharing my creative passions with you. YouTube is also a creative endeavor for me, and so I do consider that a hobby as well. And I want to say that because uh, if you've ever watched any of my videos, I can be quite a bit chatty, but because this is about my hobbies, I don't have people in real life, in my real immediate circle, that I can talk about these things to. And so for me, this is an extension of me just sharing my passions and talking about them. Uh, you're not going to see the beautiful flat lays or me lighting a candle or, you know, going through the forest or anything very aesthetic like that, like some of these videos are. You're not going to see me in front of a bookshelf because I'm not a booktube channel. You're not going to uh, see me ever call myself a planner channel, a journal channel, a color tube channel, a booktube channel, or a crafting channel. It is my hobbies. And because of that, the person that I want to please with my videos is me. <laughs> and I know that seems super selfish. But I am not going to concern myself with views. I'm not going to concern myself with subscriber counts. I love that people are following me on this journey, but that's not what I'm chasing. I'm sharing a passion or passions that I have. And so you're not going to see things uh, that you might typically see on any one of those niche type of channels. Uh, because I'm not chasing that, I don't feel compelled to do things the way that you would consider either the standard or typical in those niche markets because there is a certain kind of aesthetic, a certain kind of way that, that things are done uh, because people know that it gets views. Now, are they also into that same aesthetic? I hope so. Are they sharing it because it's their passion? I hope so. But it can be a bit formulaic. For me, I just do what feels good to me. Now, because of that, I don't get the views, I don't get the subscribers, but again, if I am making videos that are interesting to me, then I don't have the expectation that this is going to be interesting to everyone else. And I think it's important for me to say that, especially in this particular video, because as you saw when I first started, there's a whole bunch of things on the desk. And that was because up and through like April of 2022, um, a good year for me for reading would be maybe uh, 15 to 20 books for the year. Um, more, more often than not, it was maybe between five and eight. Uh, but for this month alone, I think I've already read like 12 books <laughs> and it has been a trend on that and there is a reason why. And so 
the way that I used to do my reading journal system worked for me because it wasn't one of my more priority hobbies, uh, coloring um, and journaling was. Now that it's something that's taking a lot more of my time, I do want it to be organized in, in a very specific way. So I know that first part might seem just, oh, just shut up and show us already, but uh, I'm not going to do voiceovers. I don't do speed throughs. I want to talk about my stuff and the reason why I have them. I should have said this in the beginning, but if that's not your thing, don't worry about it. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't want to watch anymore. <laughs> okay. There is a rhyme and reason why I'm showing you the things in the order that I'm showing you. Um, my hobbies do wait on me. I do not feel compelled to do something just because I have it. Uh, I need to be in the mood or otherwise I feel like I'm just wasting my time. Uh, so this one, the last time I did something in here, I think was... Oh, I really should write things down. I know there's a video. But I think this might have been like March or April, whenever I read this book. But yeah, this is my Primrosia A5 bullet journal. I did get this from Amazon. If you're interested in any of these things, just let me know and I can link them below. It has a linen cover, so I do actually put a plastic cover on it just because I do want my notebooks to look pristine. And this journal has a bit, very specific function. So this is my reading book and movie journal. At the time that I created this, I wasn't reading a lot watching a lot either by way of movies or television. And so uh, this is absolutely an activity of creativity for me. I don't come in here often, but this I did, uh, in, was, I was inspired by the Bridgerton series on Netflix. And so in that uh, TV series, it is the Whistledown Papers and mine, it is the Hannah Down Papers, Society Reviews. And it's just a little uh, sort of, synopsis, I guess, of things that I've watched, read, uh, or TV's movies, again, because it does comprise all three of those things. Uh, because this is a time-consuming process, uh, it isn't a lot in here. So I watched The Witches, but the doodling art, because this really is about doodling and writing on a page, uh, I just uh, chose something I'd seen online, and then I did all of these doodles and colored them in. This was based on the series. I actually should have started that first. And then this was a book that I had picked up from Walmart. And again, I based the cover art on uh, the actual cover of the book, which is very sketchy. And the seam uh, on it was uh, this, not quite this blue. It's actually a little bit darker, but I liked the play of that. And the rest of this is empty. And when I get inspired to put something in here, I will. But I did want to show you this because a lot of the things you're going to see are creative in nature. It's not something that I feel compelled to do on any kind of regular basis. To be honest, I wasn't doing watching, reading these things on a regular basis. This is my Hobonichi A6 Teisho Avec. This cover was sent to me. I didn't actually ask permission if it was okay to share her name, but you know who you are and I am so thankful for it. And uh, I'm hoping to actually repurpose this uh, either in the new year or repurpose this journal and just keep it on here. Again, I don't know because I do want some of the new one piece things that are coming out for 2023. Now this is something that I had started in the latter part of 2021 and this was going to be a daily journal as this a6 Hobonichi Teisho Avec is supposed to be. And so what I had done was all of those monthly calendars, let me see if I can show you, that look like this, I knew I didn't need that. And so I actually had started doing this in December 2021 because this is supposed to start January 2022. And it was just going to be something that I was going to collage uh, every single day to sort of commemorate because even though I don't live um, an endless loop of Groundhog Day, my days are very similar. So I thought, okay, well, it can be sort of like a a collage book, glue book, whatnot, of the just the various things that I wanted to commemorate. Well, this very quickly kind of fell to the wayside <laughs> because it's just, it's a lot of work. And because I do have quite a bit of hobbies, uh, 
yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I didn't find the time for this. And so I thought, okay, well maybe instead of a daily journal, I can do a weekly journal or a monthly journal. And again, all that fell by the wayside, but I wanted to show you this in this particular video because I do like seeing the book covers of the things that I have been reading in here. Now, all of the uh, images you see here uh, are from my, what's it called? My HP Sprocket. Yeah, HP Sprocket. And I love the look of that, but those can get kind of expensive. <laughs> so uh, for the reading journal that I'll be doing, I'll probably just uh, pull images offline and just uh, print it in color. But because I knew I liked the look of this, this is something that's going to carry forward, although in a, in a much different iteration. But because it does have some book related content in here, I did want to show this to you. Now what I'm thinking for the rest of this, because I actually only had done some collaging up until here, I think when it comes into the daily pages, uh, I might do some text, I might do some anime. I do like my journals to have a purpose, uh, but I also don't mind if I need to repurpose something because I know I'm not going to be doing this. But again, this is my Hobonichi A6 Teisho Avec. This is a minimalist art um, A5 journal. Um, A5 is my preferred uh, size and this was absolutely inspired by Tori of Creative Mind Coffee Grinds. This is a junk drawer journal so basically it's a notebook <laughs> because it just has anything but the majority of the things in here are either journal, book, or movie related. Like this was a book that I thought I might want to put into my Primrosia journal and so I did want to have uh, some thoughts down and some ideas on cover art and because I wasn't watching or reading a lot at that time this was easy enough to try to maintain but as I go through this you're going to see that kind of fell to the wayside now fortunately I can generally look at things and think oh yeah no I, I remember this and I, I read my thoughts but when I was setting this up my whole thought process behind it okay so just so that I know I read this in February so what I did in that Primrosia journal had to be sometime after that um, but my whole thought process was I'll put it in here and then I can divert it into other things and because I wasn't reading or watching a lot um, it was easy enough to maintain but as I read more watched more then it's like yeah, I don't know uh, that I can maintain it or that I even want to. And so some things I put down, all these squares were supposed to be my just quick rendition of what I wanted the cover art to be, just so I have an idea of what I wanted to go into my Primrosia journal. There's always thought processes behind the things that I do. This was just some testing of some... Um, art that I was going to do, but uh, I didn't realize that I would just be consuming so much content. And because of that, it just, I think I stopped around June or July. And okay, I did this in August, but then there's nothing else in here just because, uh, yeah, it, it just didn't make sense to do it in this fashion because there was just so much of it that I was doing. So uh, again, this is going to be just an ideas notebook for me. It just stays on my shelf. And so, you know, my hobbies wait on me. I'm not uh, dictated or directed by my hobbies. And so that's that one. Now we get a little bit more functional. So this is my long-term reference journal. And even a lot of this I had scrapped because I'm no longer doing things this way. But when I had done this, I had started this in January 2021. I did what you typically see in journal videos. I did a table of contents. I, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to use this the way that it should be because I actually enjoy flipping through my journals, but I thought it'd be interesting just to try. And this was a place where I was just going to track various hobby information that I wanted because some of the other things uh, might get discarded after they're full, but this, because it is such a thick notebook, this is a Maisie Lane Co. again that I've covered, um, 
I thought, okay, well, this is going to expand a few years. And so at least I'll have all of the data in one place. So for 2021, I had read 16 books. And then for April and May alone, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, I had read 16 books, or at least that's how many that I listed here. And when I was only reading between seven and 15 books a year, well, yeah, this system makes sense and I didn't feel I needed it all in one place. And so I've got some of the things here. I ran out of space on this bookshelf and so it goes back here. with another bookshelf. I was almost finished with this one here. And so I was gonna do another bookshelf here, but I didn't like that it was all spread out like that because the way this was working is, okay, think of something else I wanted to keep on a long-term basis. Again, as you can see, I fell by the wayside because I was just watching a lot more. And as I determined, okay, that works, that doesn't, that never worked, I don't know what I was thinking, uh, this works, but I'd like it to be more functional, then I realized that, yeah, this just isn't going to work for me, but I don't throw things away. Um, this is all time spent, um, all things that I've enjoyed. And so I do plan to keep this, but now this is going to be just a place, at least for now, that I'm going to track some of my coloring book hobby information. And if later I decide I wanna put something else in here, because I know that I want to keep this over a span of time, I certainly have enough pages back here to do so. Okay, so that's my long-term reference journal that did have some reading content in it. And if you've been on my channel before, you have seen this. This is my Hobonichi Weeks Mega. I did choose the Mega because I did want it to involve uh, quite a, diff a few different things for me. I track some of my YouTube videos. I use it for work. I use it for bill pay. Uh, I use it for tracking. And so the trackers are really where I have a lot of reading information in here. And so starting in December, actually, yeah, starting in December, I did write some things down on what I was reading. And so December was a heavy reading month for me, considering I only read 16 books in the entirety of 2021, and six of them were read in December alone. I decided to track it in here. And so as I go through the first part of 2022 was very short on books. I actually had um, gotten really back into my adult coloring. Uh, I'd gotten really into that in 2021, but the latter part of 2021, I was more into reading. So, you know, I only have a certain amount of time. So if one hobby is going to get my time, then the other hobby isn't. And so read three books in January, read three books in February, three books again in March. And then where it kind of exploded was in April because I did get a Kindle Fire. And I have to tell you, even though I was so anti ebook, the amount of ebooks that I have consumed in the last few months is it's not extraordinary to me because I used to be a very avid reader, but uh, it is more than I anticipated. And because I read a lot of Kindle Unlimited books, it's a monthly subscription. Uh, and because Instagram knows it can uh, <laughs> recommend books to me and I'll at least go check them out, I have just been consuming so much. In fact, um, I only read maybe one or two physical books a month and then the rest are ebooks. So for April alone, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I read 12 books and it just kind of goes from there. I average between 13 and 15 books a month. Now, if you haven't followed me or even if you haven't, I am a notorious skimmer, skipper, back of the book, gister. 
uh, I need to know the gist of the story. Now, if I find the story or the characters compelling, then yes, I will read uh, quite a bit of it. But eventually, I'm going to get antsy and I'm going to want to know how this ends. Am I wasting my time on this story? If I don't like a story, I have no problem. Just stop reading it. And then, you know, who cares? But because of that, I can consume a lot of content. And my whole philosophy on that, and this has been my philosophy for years, is if I like a book well enough. I will read it and read it and read it again. And because I don't read every single word on every single page, when I reread it again, there's always content that I did not realize happened in my first read through or my fifth read through. There is a book series by David Eddings that I am reading that I read when I was in middle school, that there are certain things I'm like, oh, I didn't know that happened or I forgot that happened. And it's just all fresh and new to me. That's just my reading style. And this works really well for me to uh, track all of the books that I'm reading. What is inherently wrong with this is, or not wrong, but is going to be problematic, is this is only a uh, journal system that I keep for the year. Uh, at the end of December, I'll probably put this on my shelf for a couple of months, uh, look through it, maybe do a, a full-on flip through, but then I'm not going to keep this forever in a day, and if I want this information, I need to keep it somewhere. I did have an actual uh, section back here when I started out this in December that I was going to do as a reading journal. I never actually filmed a video about this because I wanted to play catch up. And so I wanted it to be just a little bit of my thoughts on the various books and put some quotes down. Well, I don't annotate while I'm reading. And so I'd have to go back to the books to uh, just find quotes that I thought were cool because they're and oftentimes when I'm reading things, there are lots of things that I find cool, but I don't highlight, I don't annotate, I don't do any of that. I'm just really trying to get the story. And uh, I love the look of it, but I realized I don't really care about putting my thoughts down on every single book that I'm reading. And at the time, I wasn't actually reading a lot. But as I read more, I'm like, yeah, there's certainly books that I don't care to ever write my thoughts down that I'm never going to read again. And it kind of solidifies as I try things, what I want to do, want to track and what I don't. And that's why this reading journal system doesn't work for me because my long-term reference journal, it was too scattered. My Primrosia journal, my junk journal, and that A6 Taste Show uh, are really, for me, more so creative endeavors than really tracking any kind of data or information. This tracks a lot of information, probably not in the, the most functional way, but at least uh, because I always have this with me, I can put that information in there. And so what I have started, and I'll give you a sneak peek, is this here. This is another Maisie Lane Co. that I have covered because, again, I do like to keep my journals pristine. And this is going to be just fully a reading journal. There's nothing else in here. And uh, I do plan on doing annual section and then monthly sections and then some journaling sections of books that stand out to me um, more than other books have because there there are books that have done that. I won't show you any more than this. Uh, I did want to go back to 2021 and put this in uh, just because in that red Maisie Lane Co. Uh, journal, that's when the data started. I don't actually have any data uh, that I know of from before that. I know I've done stuff. I just I didn't write it down or if I did I don't I no longer have those journals and uh, this will be my long-term reading journal I've already filmed the video for this so this should be coming out in the next few days after this video and I talk a little bit more about why I think this system is going to work a little better for me I'm hoping this video is at least mildly interesting to you guys. Um, I definitely am someone who likes to figure things out as I go along. I see a lot of videos here on YouTube about reading journals and journals and whatnot. And some of those things work for me, some of those things don't. And depending on how my life is going, um, at the time, it seemed to make a lot of sense. Uh, my Primrose Air one, I know it just sits there and waits for me. My Taisho Avec and my Junk Journal, I mean, they're just 
really notebooks at this point. Uh, this has a very specific purpose, but because I have the data in my Hobonichi, I don't feel like I have to be in this all the time. In fact, it may take me the rest of 2022 to fully really catch up in here, and that's fine. Again, the data is not going anywhere. I just want to have it a little bit more purposeful for me. I'd love to know what you guys think. Be on the lookout for a video dedicated to this journal right here coming out in the next few days. And as always, aloha.